34 factorial is this huge number here. But if you can see, we've got some numbers missing, the C, D, and A, B here. It's our job to work out what those digits are. Do pause the video now and give this problem a go for yourself, but I'm going to dive right into a solution here. There's a bunch of ways you can approach this. Um, I'm going to start by considering this digit B here. Now, the one thing I know about factorials, or certainly large numbers factorial, is that they're going to end in a bunch of zeros. So you can see we've got at least six zeros here, but potentially it ends in some more zeros as well. So we're going to start by asking ourselves, well, how many zeros should a 34 factorial end in? Because if the answer is more than six, then that means that B is zero, and well, potentially A is zero as well. OK, how do we work out how many zeros 34 factorial ends in? Well, essentially, we're going to think about the prime factorization of 34 factorial. Um, so remember, it is 34 times 33 times 32 times blah, 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 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. But if we write this in its prime factorization, it's going to be 2 to the something times 3 to the something times 5 to the something times 7 to the something. And I could keep going, listing out the primes all the way up to, I guess, 31 in this case, because that's the biggest prime number less than 34. So 34 factorial could be written like this, where we have different numbers here. Now, how do we get a zero at the end of a number when we're multiplying a bunch of things together? We have to multiply by 10. How do we get a 10 here? Well, we have to combine a 2 and a 5. So whatever these numbers here are in this 34 factorial, let's just make them up for a second. Imagine it was 2 to the 41 there and this was a 5 to the 8 here. I don't know, but let's just imagine that it was the case that like, like that. Then how many zeros should this number have at the end of it? Well, it should be 8. The reason being because I can take 8 of these 2s, uh, so take 2 to the 8 and take uh, 5 to the 8 here, and multiply them together, and that gives me 10 to the 8. And each time I multiply by 10, I'm introducing another 0 at the end. So I'd have 8 zeros at the end, and, I ha and I'd have no powers of 5 left, left over, so I wouldn't be able to uh, create any more 10s. So essentially, I'm looking for the smaller number out of these two, and that's going to tell me how many zeros I have at the end of my number. Let's think about what these numbers are. I made up 41 and 8. It's pretty clear that this number for 5 is going to be smaller because when, you multi when we look at this product up here, multiples of 5 occur a lot less frequently than multiples of 2 do. You get a multiple of 2 every other number, but a multiple of 5 you only get every fifth number. OK, well, how many multiples of 5 are there here? Well, there's 6 because the biggest multiple of 5 under 34 is 30, and that's 5 times 6. So you'd have 6 multiples of 5, so that suggests that this number here should be 6. However, we've got to just be a little bit careful and remember that 25 has kind of extra power. It's double because 50, 25 is 5 squared, so you're going to get an extra power of 5 there. So you get 7 in total. So in fact, in the prime factorization of 34 factorial, it's 5 to the power of 7. And that tells us that this number should end in 7 zeros. And therefore, we can conclude that B must also be 0. Great. So we know that B must be 0. So we're left with A, C, and D. The next digit I'm going to tackle is A. Now, we know that these guys are all zeros. But this thing here is still going to be even because, as we say, there's going to be a bunch more twos in this number. So there's definitely going to be more than seven twos in this number. Um, in fact, there's going to be more than, you know, probably more than, uh, well, at least 17 because 34 over 2 is uh, 17. But then you'd also have the powers of 2, which give you kind of bonus, uh, bonus powers here. Um, but anyway, so we know that this number here. We've taken out, if we think about this as 10 to the 8, as 10 to the 7, sorry, we've taken out 2 to the 7. But as I say, there's at least 2 to the 10 more in this number. So this thing that I've underlined with the squiggly line, that's got to be a multiple of 2 to the 10. In particular, it's a multiple of 2 cubed, which is 8. So we know that this nine number here must be a multiple of 8. Now, what's a nice test to tell if a number is a multiple of 8 or not? Well, you look at its last three digits. So in this case, 3, 5, A, and this number must be a multiple of 8. So 350, A must be a multiple of 8. Now, what are the multiples of 8 near 350? Well, 360 is a multiple of 8. 
um, it's 8 times 45. And so therefore, the one underneath it will be 3, 5, 2, and the one underneath that will be 3, 4, 4. And so the only one that works is 3, 5, 2. And so we get that A is 2. Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. So we've got that A is 2 and B is 0. Now, to get C and D, we've used so far that the fact that this is a multiple of 5, a multiple of 2, and use various powers there. We're going to do something similar. We know that this number is a multiple of 9. So we can use the trick for numbers being a multiple of 9 in that the sum of their digits is also a multiple of 9. So if I add up these digits here, so 2 plus 9 plus 5 and so on, all the way up to, well, the 0, I guess, all the way over here, what do we get? Well, we get 139. So we're going to get 139 and then plus these A, B's, C's and D's. This thing here has to be a multiple of 9. Well, we know that A is 2 and B is 0, so we can just make this 141 plus C plus D is a multiple of 9. And so 141 here, well, we can use the fact that 144 is a multiple of 9. We can say that this thing here is congruent to minus 3 plus C plus D. And this thing here we require to be 0 mod 9. So in other words, C plus D has to be, uh, has to be 3, sorry, mod 9. Okay, cool. So C plus D is 3 mod 9. Okay, now we're going to use the fact that this number is, a, is divisible by 11. So what's the trick for divisibility by 11? Well, you look at the alternating sum. So I'm going to do 2 minus 9 plus 5 minus 2 plus 3 minus 2 and so on, alternating the sum uh, forever. And this is going to equal 19. Um, and then I've got C and D here. So in this, in this 19, I've, all, I've already included the A is 2 and B is 0. And then I'm going to have minus C plus D. Like so, the 19 minus C plus D. And the, this trick says that this number here would have to be a multiple of 11. So this would have to be 0 mod 11. So in other words, minus C plus D is congruent to uh, minus 19. And minus 19, well, 19 is the same as minus 3 mod 11, because 22 is multiple of 3. So minus 19 will be minus minus 3. So that will be 3 mod 11. So we need C plus D to be 3 mod 9, and minus C plus D to be 3 mod 11. And remember, C and D are digits, so they're between 0 and 9. So we can kind of just spot here that C is 0 and D is 3. So therefore, C is 0 and D is 3. And now the rest, uh, or how you can kind of verify that this is the only solution to this set of kind of simultaneous equations is you can kind of just go by trial and error. You can split it into a little bit of casework, but I can't see a much simpler way of seeing this. Maybe there is a nicer way to solve this uh, simultaneously, but you basically kind of do it by brute force. You spot that this is a solution and you show that there are no others. Amazing. So we've got what C is, we've got what D is, and now you can perhaps guess what year this problem was taken from, because if we look at A, B, C, D, we get 2003.